tip of the day. We've got a lower control arm that's got a rubber bush that's bonded to a steel outer housing that gets pressed into the lower arm, this one here. Always tighten the big bolt that holds that arm in at ride height or where the car's going to be sitting. Otherwise, if you have it at full droop, which is when the front's jacked up and the wheels are just hanging in the air, the bush will twist too far and you'll end up ripping it out really quickly. Just had a little bit of a play on the trans brake, but noticed straight away that um, it was drawing far more than what the 8 amp output um, can supply. It was getting up to about 15, 16 amps and tripping that circuit. So then I did a bit of homework. I should have probably done it first, but they reckon some of these solenoids can draw quite a lot. A lot of the later model stuff only draw four or five amps apparently, but this one was way over that. So now we've got to change the wiring a bit and we'll um, feed it inside the car and do it off a relay. Just chopped up another bit of the old fence post and then we're making a catch cam for the transmission. It's been a while since I've been in the spray booth. It's probably a good thing. All right, today we finished tightening all the rear end up. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a push now until Jamboree if we do decide to do it. At the moment, we just gotta pan it out each day, make sure when it goes on the dyno, which hopefully could be this Saturday that it um, all plays the game and we don't have any major issues. Donnie's about to get the grinder out to get rid of these runs. Ooh, much better. Old Donnie's just made this beautiful little bracket for the trans brake and the bump button. So we just made a little harness so we can just unplug it from there when we're not using it. But that should be easy enough for the driver to be able to control. It's getting its first oil change. It's done about a kilometre, but always a good thing to do. Oh, lucky I remembered to reset the oil trip meter these Salikas come out with. Oof, what an idea. the magician has just made this beautiful little uh, mounting plate for the keypad wrapped in real carbon fiber straight off the roll come up good Donnie well done once again the guys at 101 did a, an awesome deal on a keypad and a screen as well for us so we'll try and get all that in so the little can hub lets you put one can connection from the ECU into this and then any other can device like a keypad or a dash or plenty of other things they sell go straight into this so you don't have leads and joiners and stuff everywhere. Nice little unit. Good old master Donny on the next job. Fits in there nicely. Why didn't it just come out like that from Toyota? Yeah. Uh, spit to the fuel system and roll over valve. Hopefully we don't have to use it for its intended purpose. Don't be like me and do this. The amount of times I've done this, you think you'd bloody learn. Just touching, so we'll cut that last half off and we'll be good as gold. This is why we give Donnie all the fiddly jobs, because he's good at it. You know it's going to be an exciting day when you pull up here and go in and buy some nitrous bits and pieces. So the boys from Southport Auto Cyclers and Auto Parts Supply, Nick and Andy, awesome guys, I've dealt with them for quite a few years. They've said to me that how about we put a shot of nitrous on to help the game out and they've um, jumped on board and paid for that for us. So much appreciated. We'll show you as we go how we're going to install this little dry kit. Time to put a 75 dry shot into the old Celica. Should help it get up on the converter and get it um, on the two step on the line. We've got the bottle in. I think the wife might be upset we won't be doing any family vacations in this car. It's always a good idea to hide that from the police. So a couple of warm up laps. Making sure oil pressure, coolant temp and everything's behaving itself and where it should be. So far we're looking good. What's, what's happening at Top Level Projects, <laughs> mate? Are we working hard, boys? Yeah. Oh, look. Hey, this is more technical than cars. 
That's, that's way more technical. A quick one for the Honda guys. These are the plates that I designed for the CRV um, rear diffs for guys doing the all-wheel drive conversion on Hondas. Um, I'll just quickly show you once I pull it apart where they go, what they do, and anyone that's in the Honda game that's thinking about going all-wheel drive, this is the best way of locking the input shaft into one of these diffs. This is the dual pump. We remove this part and throw that in the bin, and there's one more piece I'll show you shortly. The other part is this little drive pin that goes in the input shaft, which runs the back side of the pump, and that other collar I just showed you runs the front side of the pump. That's why it's called a dual pump. And all it does is when it senses a different speed from the back to the front input shaft side, basically into the pump, all it does is apply pressure on this servo, which locks all that clutch pack together, which we're about to get rid of. This is your clutch pack and hub, I call it. It um, contains your friction plates and your solid steel plates. Works like a, exactly the same as a clutch in a motorbike engine, basically, that's got multiple small plates. So here are the original plates. You've got one with teeth on the inside and no teeth on the outside, which is the front one. Then you've got ones that have got a, a tooth on the outside and not on the inside. That allows uh, something to be connected or disconnected, basically, which is this center hub from that outside clutch drum. Usually this can spin or it can lock together when the force is applied to them clutch plates. All we wanna do is lock the center hub to the outside drum. In the past, guys in the States were welding them up. Um, got a bit, bit ordinary to be honest and then that's when we come up with these plates. They just slip in and job done. I'll show you shortly. Like a glove. So without the plates, when you turn the input shaft, it would not spin at the back, but now with the plates that lock up that input shaft through the diff, when you turn the front, it turns the back just like any other conventional diff out there. Always remember kids, safety first. Wheel Nation's contribution to the car. We've got a nice little IC7 dash display that's a um a pretty cool little feature well i've had one of those weeks where i should have probably been working on other cars but i couldn't help myself we um we did get a fair bit done we've got all the front end done all the rear end done nitrous on right pandas next time i see you we'll be on the dyno